Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. I want us to pray this morning. I want us to thank God with a grateful heart. I want us to open our mouth and give God all the praise this morning. Lift up your voice and bless the name of the Lord. Father, we thank you this morning. We give you all the glory. We bless your name, O Lord. Elo glahido stai ala pandele belemen shadai ala gadai. Hele keto le fale go stai ala pali antala bala man shondele vele glektai. I call le shade go stai ala pandele belemen shai. Tele gledo le vale go shai ala panda ala bala man shondele vele belemen shai. Kadai ala tele ntole shale go stai ala pandele belemen shai. Kele gleto le sale gusta ya la palu ascende le bele mensa ya ikea kapala dele ntole vali gusta ya akea kapala dua sole tande le bele mensa ya ia kapala dele ntole vali gusta ya la pande le bele mensa ya Father we give you all the glory we bless your name O God we thank you for another day to come into your presence and worship you Father we thank you. Father, we bless you. Pelogo style la pandele bele mensaya. Keleg lectole zadigo style la panda la bala mensaya. He ya gadel and toll and zadiba soul and valaglactaya. He ya kapala dole saligo style la pandele bele mensaya. Re kabadole valigo saya. He ke ya kapala dua son de le bele mensaya. Radule style la pandele bele mensaya. Thank the Lord for your life this morning. Thank the Lord for your families. Ikaya kapala dua sole tali gusta ya la pandele bele mensaya. O vali gusta ya la pandele bele mensaya. Iya kapala dole sali guste le mfala glata ya. Telege dole zada ya la bala mensaya. Telege dole zadi baso le mfala gladi gusta ya. Ipanda ya la bali ya baso le mfala gada ya. Iya kapala dole sali guste le mpaya la gada ya. I akopala dua sonde le bele mensa ya i tende le bele menso le mvala gladi gun sonde le bele mensa pede gezu le mvala glata ya i ke ya kapala dua sonde le bele mensa ya i ke ya kapala dua sonde le bele mensa ya pede gezu le mvala gladi gun sonde le bele mensa ya ati ya kapado le sonde le bele mensa da da bada gada ya i ya kapala do le sonde da bahati ya don sonde le bele mensa ya. Hele gledi go shanda, iya kapala dole shadi ya na man shande le bele bele mensha. Peke sule vala gladi go shande le bele mensha ya. Rahaba dole shadi badi ya man sha ya. Father, we give you all the glory. Father, we bless you. Father, we praise you in the name of Jesus. We want to pray into today's service. We are praying, committing each section into the hands of God. We are praying that God will transform our lives from opening prayer through to the closing prayer. In the name of Jesus, lift up your voice and pray. Pele gle ligo shandele bele men shole mfala glata ya la pali atendele bele men shai. Heya kapala dua shandele bele men shai. Iya kapala dua shole mfala gladi go shandele bele men shole mfala glada ya. Father, we pray and we commit each section into your hands. We pray that our lives will be transformed by every section in the name of Jesus. We pray for whoever will be leading each of the sections. We pray that through them you bless your people. We pray that through them you reveal yourself unto your people. In the mighty name of Jesus. Kole valigo shandele bele menshai. Kaligo stele taligo shanda yala bala man shandele bele bele menshai. Hele gletele sole mfala glataya. Ikea kapala dua shandele bele menshai. Ateya kapala dua shaya. Iya kapalu atende. Tendele bele mensha ya, telege dole mensha ya la pali ya tendele bele mensha. Iya kapala dua stele mfala glata ya, iya kapala dele ntole mensha da ya da bada kata ya. Ike ya kapala dua stole mfala gido stelege sha ya, iya kapanda tendele bele mensha ya, iya katole zali gusha tendele bele mensha ya, iya kampaya la.
Palagadaya, Reha Patol and Zadabadiagan Sol and Palagadaya, Pelegle Hidon Sandele Vele Messiah, Pelega Digo Sanda Alabadiagan Sol, Yaka Palagaduria Bandele, Tadaga Sol and Palagadigo Sire, Ikea Kapala Gadol and Palabalagan Sire, in the name of Jesus. We are still praying the same prayer. We are praying that the Spirit of God will move mightily in today's service. We are praying that lives will be touched in today's service. We are praying that today's service will be an extraordinary service. Lift up your voice and pray unto God. Kia kapala dua solen taya la bali aban solen felge daya. Kia kapala dua solen taya la bali aban shondele belementaya. Pelu staya ndaya dagan solen vaya dagadaya. Let the spirit of God move into this service in the mighty name of Jesus. Kelu shali bali ba shondele belementa. Raka pata ya la bali aban shaya. Iya kule shali bali aban shondele belementa. Raka Badule Shada Yala Bala Manta, Telegedele Vayala Bala Mansaya, Yakole Shada Balantaya, Spirit of the Living God, move in this place in the mighty name of Jesus. Kilus Tayala Balanta, Telegletole Shali Balia Manshon de la Bele Mesha, Mekule Balagadaya, touch lives this morning, transform lives this morning in the name of Jesus. Iya kapala dua shondele bele men shanda yala gadaya Iya kampa yala gadaya Iya kapala dua shole mpaya le gadaya Helu stayan dini bede men shondele bele men shanda da bahataya Iya kapadaya la badia man shondele bele men shanda Ipele kle hidu staya Iya kapala dua shenda Itendele bele men shanda Hadi kustele mpaya la gadaya Iya kapala dua shondele bele men shanda in the name of Jesus, I want us to pray to the word of God that will be coming to us this morning. We are praying that the word of God will be fulfilled this morning. We are praying that whatever word God has for us this morning, we shall receive it into our spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus, lift up your voice and pray. Father, we pray that your word will be communicated this morning. Pray that we shall receive whatever word you have for us this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. Kia kapala do a shandele bele mensha. Kia kapalu a shandele bele gedaya. We prepare our hearts to receive your word this morning. Kilos talego shanda. Kia kapala do a shanda. Teleg lektole talego shaya. Kivali go shele faya la gedaya. Atendele bele mensha. Kapala do a soul and Zarabada Gadisha, Tele Pedigo Sandele Belemensha, Elo Zarabata, Ia Pandayana Mansha, Tele Gadule Padagadaya, I Kapala do a Sunday, Elo Stayanda, I Kia Kapala do a Sunday, Kenya de Belo Sadabatai, Ia Gabadaya la Balamantaya, I Pendele Belemensha, Tele Pedigo Sandele Belemensha. In the name of Jesus, I want us to pray this last prayer. We are praying and we are laying our requests before the Lord this morning. I don't know what you brought before the Lord this morning. I don't know what is overweighing you. I don't know what your burdens are. But we are praying this morning that whatever that is on our hearts, the Lord will cause us to triumph in them. In the name of Jesus, we are praying that God will fulfill all our hearts' desires and our needs. Whatever you request you have, bring it before the Lord this morning. Lift up your voice and pray. Father, we lay our requests before you this morning. In the name of Jesus, we pray that you will see to them. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray that you fulfill your word concerning our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray that whatever promise you have said over us, whatever word you have declared over us, we pray that it will be fulfilled in the name of Jesus. 
Hello, Sadi Adabati, I'm my son, the level of Gedaya. Hey, I can follow the Australian Tire that got the good style. Hello, son, the level of Messiah. Hada Dabadu, the Palaklataya, the Pandi, and I'm my son, the level of Gedaya. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. We give you all the glory. We are grateful, Lord. We say thank you, Lord. We bless your name this morning. Father, we have come again into your presence. We pray that you will bless us today. We pray that we will live here transformed. We pray that we will live here impacted. We pray that whatever word you have for us today, we shall receive it in good heart. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, church. Good morning to you all. May the grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ abide and rest with us all. Amen. We are going to break up for Bible study. Bible study. So group one will be here, group two, and then group three. Four access. Group one, group two, group three, and group four. So we only have 30 minutes, so let's make good use of these 30 minutes. Not much time. Hallelujah. So you have the sheet, so it's indicated on the sheet. Amen. Group one, group two, and group three, group four upstairs. And then please, each group, make sure you appoint a reporter. Make sure you appoint a reporter. That is the first thing you do before you begin.
of that. I love So if Amen. Can you keep time for me? You are? Okay, thank you. How many minutes do you have? Okay, we can use it wisely. Okay, so we just read the introduction, and it kind of gives us an outline of what it, it means to have a strong personal devotion, right? So let's discuss, like, when we, when we look at the Word of God, who is one person that stands out to us for having an like, for kind of like being an example of personal devotion. Okay. And I think, you know, I, it's so funny because I was um, kind of asking God, like, why are we reading this book? And why are we talking about personal devotion? Right? And remember, even with everything David did, <laughs> he did some crazy stuff. <laughs> he did some bad stuff. But still, yeah. He was considered a friend of God because he always went back, right? He always went back. And I think that's why personal devotion is so important because sometimes God will look, you know, the other way about certain things because you are consistently going back. So let us look at our questions. It says, 
identify the things we are to avoid as people of God. And the reference is verses 1. So what are some things that we should avoid as people of God? Okay. People yeah. that like aren't from God, like usually when they're not from God, they, they do things without God being in the center of it, or they do things that are of the world, which they usually deny it and don't want to say it to the world. Yes. So the reference text is verses 1. Can somebody read verses 1 again? Psalm 1, verses 1. It says, oh, the joys of those who do not follow, follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners or join in with mockers. Yes. Thank you so much, Danielle. So, again, what are some things? Everybody should give one. I would say we should avoid um, sin. Yes. <laughs> I said sin. Avoid sin. Um, there's many forms of sin, so another sin. And the scripture said that scornful, right? Mockers. What is a mocker? What is a mocker? Mm, yes. Anybody else? Okay, so if we look at the verse two, it says, what should be our attitude towards the word of the law of the Lord? So the word or law of the Lord. So that is in reference to verses 2. What should be our attitude? What should be our attitude? Yes. I meditate on the word every day. Okay. I find it uh, very helpful in the morning you wake up. Sometimes you don't even feel good. Mm. Mm -hmm. It is. It, it's online. It's just a few. Okay. <laughs> um, but just by reading the word of God and just just being quiet and listening to the voice of God, your, your day is completely changed. Mm. You should have had like a Wednesday of the day that you can't say, put yourself there and just spend time with God, your day will come like that. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think our attitude towards the word should be like, Humility, mm. so that way you can be like receptive to what we're reading and mm. actually like take it in and um, actually do what we read and go out there and actually like you know. Do that. I love that. I love that. You know, when I was coming to church, I was um, worshiping when I was coming to church, full blast, minding my business, and um, you know the word that comes. A lot of times we say, a scripture a day keeps the devil away, but it really doesn't. Right? Because if I read, the enemy knows the word too. Right? So I think the meditation. So what does it mean to meditate on the word of God? Because some of us, we just like, okay, it's a checklist, check off. I'm done reading my word. Pastor posted two scriptures a day. I'm done. Checked off. What does it mean to meditate? I would say to meditate means to study and mm. to apply. So when you read a verse, you're not just reading it and saying, okay, well, check mark, I've read this verse. But instead you're saying, uh, okay, I've read this verse, God revealed to me what it is you want me to understand from it, and how can I apply it to my life? And, you know, and the Bible says that we should keep the word of God hidden. Life, understanding, praying on it, and learning. Yeah, so let me piggyback on what you just said. So that's from David. David said, I have hidden the word in my heart so that I may not what? sin. Why did he quote that? Why? If it's in your heart, it convicts you um, even when you contemplate sin. Those convictions. Yeah, the word of God, the Holy Spirit is mm -hmm. the word, right? Yeah. So if you have the word hidden in your heart, you have the instruction of the Holy Spirit hidden in your heart. So yeah. like he said, if you want to oh. sin or something, it will convict you. Or if you need direction, it will give you that direction. Did you read this book? Pardon? So I want to say something about meditation. Mm. So meditation, I think uh, it's something that we are supposed to leave our physical food unclean. 
and assume the full power. So it's something that you need to engage the Holy Spirit so you will be able to understand whatever you are reading from the Bible. Yeah. So what are some things that prevent us sometimes from meditating on the word? Alan? Like distractions of the world, I guess, mm. like the phone. You know, some people, some like when you're trying to pray, some people like bothering you and stuff. And you're like, mm, Your phone? Really? <laughs> <I know laughs> the oh phone? No, no. No, I'm just saying in general, the phone. Yeah, lots of things. Well, yeah. There's lots of distractions that are trying to get us off of the way of uh, God. Like school? I was just going to say, like, people might think it's, like, a waste of time, like, for some people, because, like, they, they think that they could be doing, be doing better stuff during their days, yeah. so they just, like, might forget about that and, like, yeah. just do other stuff so they might not take it serious. I think sometimes the whole idea of meditation, if you're not careful, is very misconstrued in this world nowadays. Like, the whole meditation thing and the visualization and the affirmations and all of those things has been very misconstrued. So if you're not careful, you will think you're meditating in the Holy Spirit, but really it's just a carnal act. <laughs> it's just a carnal act, right? Because yoga is meditation. Right? And um, how does our delight in and meditation on God's word impact our lives? So how does, I think we answered this. So how does that meditation that we just spoke about, a lot of people gave really great insights. How does that impact our lives? Aaron? It makes us a better person towards people and God. Yes. Let's give it to Simeon. Hi, Simeon. We want to hear you. Uh, Simeon, say something. Yes, Simeon. What about you, honey? <laughs> you, you okay? Okay, anybody, how does um, our delight and meditation on God's word impact our lives? Because if, let's say, a lot, okay, so for example, right, a lot of people do yoga, and they said it, it lightens up their life, and it takes them to a different realm, right? So we know that, right? So how does us meditating on the God's word, allowing the Holy Spirit to reveal the word to us, Allowing the work to the word to work through us, how does that impact our lives, Paris? It could help us like know more about like the word, like deep in our faith, I guess. So by meditating, the word gets to have a root in our heart. Mm. So sometimes when you are praying, maybe you prayed over one particular thing over a long while. So at that time, you can use those words that God, in your word, you said, mm -hmm. like, yeah, I'll be good when I do this, I'll be good when I do that. So I think that will please God to also come to the yes. And I think the scripture said, planted by streams of water. And yeah. I just to add to William's point, and the Bible even says that God holds his word above his name, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I like what William said about using the word of God as your prayer guide as you mm -hmm. pray, because then you're holding God to his promises and what he said concerning us. So, And it allows you to pray longer. Yeah, It allows you to go into deeper realms, right? And one thing that I always say, because one thing that I, how I know the word is so impactful is what I love Hezekiah's story. If Hezekiah can go back and say, yo, like, you said this, you said that, you said that, now you need to do this, do that. He was able to hold him to his word. And as a result, he was given, what, 15 more years. How much more would our life flourish? How much more would we receive what we're asking for if we just gave him his worship? Right? The word is his worship. That's how we give him back his worship. Amen? So in what practical ways can a Christian with a strong personal devotional life become fruitful? Because it says that we must be planted by streams of water 
where we don't wither, where we bear fruit. So how can we? Anybody should I take on somebody? I think whatever we spend a lot of our time on kind of shows up in how we, we live in the world. So when you have a good personal devotional time, even the way you begin to interact with others um, changes. And so you start to impart some, I don't know, some godly behaviors on other people. That was really, really good. Anybody else? And even on um, Friday, I think um, Grace preached, and she talked about what we eat shows up. So what are you eating? What are you entertaining? Because what you do becomes you. So I think it's just that awareness piece, right? You want to contribute? I think of the part that we had to see yeah. in the beginning mm -hmm. of the, the scripture. Um, when we are told the word of God, we are always in a position to become the word of God. Um, my husband was studying yesterday, actually, for the study group, and he slipped by the heaven. Out the, um, the tour mm -hmm. and to run back and what he did. And so they slipped over my story. I you know, at that day, um, a, a very minor person said, No, yesterday was the grace of God that something happened to us. And somebody who's just minding his own business was like, This has nothing to do with God. <laughs> but if you one way you can show that your Christian appreciation is to be seen. Okay. Mm. And so they were able to talk to him because what we have to find the way and mm -hmm. the heart it was the grace of God that we were able to talk to him. Amen. Amen. I love that. Anybody else? What are some practical ways? So, um, I guess like overall, yeah, so I guess overall, like a person with a strong Christian belief like becomes fruitful because like the word of the Lord is like our strength. Mm -hmm. So, I guess like having the word of Obviously, words may be perfect. It may not be any perfect, but I guess um, having the word of the Lord within you will just help you to get through certain things, mm -hmm. knowing that like you'll have the Lord on your side, and yeah, then you can relate to like like you're saying how you can relate to Pastor Kai's story. Yeah. I feel like everyone can can relate to something yeah. in the Bible that you can hold on to. So if it's whatever storm or anything that you are going through, like you'll have the word of the Lord with you, and you'll know that God is with you. And so yeah. Amen. It says the Lord is a lamp. The word is the lamp unto my feet and the light unto my path. It does light your way. Because <laughs> when you're going through stuff, that's the only thing you can depend on. Like, that's the only thing. Amen? Anybody else? About how the practical ways that Christians with a strong personal devotional life become fruitful. So let's move on to the last question. Discuss factors that make it difficult to consistently observe personal devotion. So maybe in making this more to yourself, like what are some things that you, yourself, right, makes it difficult for you to be consistent? It didn't say that you're not doing it. It says that the consistency. So what are some factors? normal business, you know, business of life, you have like 3,000 ways of doing it, but you still have to make time for the Lord. Sorry, can I have a chair? Can I have a chair? Yeah, and everybody gave one. So you have a lot of time. You might just... Busyness of life changes in routine. Pardon? The busyness of life changes yeah. in routine. Sometimes uh, day to day activities uh, are full of the things that. Uh, yeah. Chairs. Need a chair. Makes it difficult to consistently observe personal devotion. Well, I said it before, I'm so. So, and like yourself. Um, like for me and stuff, like you know, 
sometimes you're just so tired that you fall asleep and you just wake up and you're like, I didn't do devotion and stuff. Like, I just feel like but a lot of us tired? are tired. What yeah, is the ti- tired. Like, what, what causes you to be tired? Uh, lots of things. Like what? Like Give just an example. every aspect of life, honestly. Because, like, life gets tiring, and that's why you really need God. Challenge of man. Pardon? The challenge of man. Change of plans, yes. Um, I know you already spoke this before, but you're saying it. For me, it's like the fact is like I do have the phones now and like my friends too. Mm-hmm. So that's like probably the biggest thing for me. That thing. What about money? Pursuit of money. a lack of like mental capacity like sometimes you could be reading the word but you're not actually like taking it in like I feel like sometimes I feel like oh, I can't even I can't focus like mm-hmm. and so I just yeah like just lack of focus I think yeah it's like you're reading your word and that's why I try to avoid using my phone mm-hmm. to read my word because Instagram be doing too much and then you have this person on WhatsApp you know, people sending ran- random things on WhatsApp and then you're like oh my god it looks cool and then the next thing you catch it Ten hours, uh, you know, three hours later, and you're st- <laughs> you didn't even finish, and then you just move on to something else, right? But I think this is all to let us know that you cannot be a Christian, a Christ follower, without connecting to the source. I think I think um, point of ten. Mm. If you are not filling up your fast weekend, you can contractually you can join the Bible, you can take it back to the Bible. I would say, I was going to say what Tobia said, but I'll give a different answer. But um, for me, it would be like entertainment. Like, let's say, you know, want to watch a Netflix show or a movie. Maybe want to hang out with friends or whatever the case may be. When you know that God has been calling you to do more personal devotion, but just distractions. And also like the storms of life. Sometimes Mm -hmm. when you go through different life struggles, it's not that you don't want to do the devotion, but you just feel so heavy and burdened Mm -hmm. that you can't really get the capacity or energy to do devotion. But at the same time, too, that God calls us to give those things to him, right? So it's about taking that step. But that's what I would say. Right? Yeah. Thank you guys all. And, you know, we can just, I think it's very important because, like, with me, one day I'll share my story. But last year, I almost went crazy. I almost went crazy. Like, I come in here and I look all like, I almost went crazy, right? Because life, you know, the, the life struggles and just obligations and everything was competing. I'd be like, you know, I'll go read my word, but then you don't do it because you're focused on something else. So I think personal devotion requires dependency. Who are you depending on? Who is your hope? Who is your future, Right? Who are you depending on? Because you cannot be a Christian and not be dependent on him. And I had to come to the realization that the reason why I was going through what I was going through is because I was relying on myself. So if you're stressed out today, if you're going through a lot today, if life is difficult today, listen, you got to check your relationship and your posture. Right? You got to check your posture. So what was our time? Five minutes. I think this is a perfect time for us to just pray. I think it'll, it's very, very crucial if we all speak. You don't have to shout, but speak and make a commitment to God. What are you going to do this week? What do you want God to make you more aware of so that you can do more for him? Because sometimes we don't even know we're doing it. Sometimes we just need him to just make us aware. Lord, make me aware. Of the, er- like of the holes in my life that is not allowing me to do the things that I need to do. So let us just take about three minutes and just speak to God. Speak to him. Make a commitment. If you need to repent, repent. This is your private moment. Another private devotional session for you because we're going into a fresh week. Right? We're going into a fresh week. 
We can't do the same. We can't do what we're used to doing. Because I know some of us, we have school, some of us, we have competing work schedules, some of us, we have children, some of us, we have sports that we have to do, and sometimes it's difficult. How do we, right, put all those things? So your prayer could be, God, help me with my time management. Help me with my desires. Help me with my motivation. Help me with my thing. Help me to know you. Help me. Lord, help us. Give us the desire because we want to flourish. We want to bloom. We want to bloom. We want to blossom. We want to be like you. We want to be, if we're going to be unleashed, then we need to. Amen. 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 So after everything that we've read, right, let's talk about the word, the idea of flourishing, because we talked about personal devotion, because I think we have. Dun, dun, dun. Yes. We have three more minutes, okay? So let's talk more. What are some ways that a Christian flourishes? What are some ways? What are some ways? What are some ways? It says that we will flourish, right? Flourish. It says flourishing through personal devotion. So when we've done all of that, what are some examples of how our life will be? And how can we be more intentional? Very fruitful. And what are some takeaways? Yeah, what are some takeaways? What are you taking away from this?
Amen. Amen. You are done. Thank you guys so much. And I pray that everything that you guys have said, every commitment, that you honor it. Because if you honor it, God will honor you. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. Praise the Lord. Welcome back again, church. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So now we are going to hear from our Ebu uh, reporters. So you are going to give us your feedback. You're going to give us your feedback. So I'm going to start with, uh, I think the mic, let's give them mic on the other side. Group one, what did you learn and what are you taking home with you with? What you learn? And your takeaway for your life, for your personal life. Just be brief, please. Group one, or any group that is ready can go. Group one, who is your reporter? Sister Portia, who is your reporter? If the reporter is not here, the facilitator will do it. Group two, while we are waiting for group one reporter. No, 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 group two. Group two is ready. Group two, yes. Hallelujah. God bless you. Yeah, just be brief. Okay, so from our group, what we learned is, um, I'm going to use the test. So from Psalm 1, verse 1 to 3. So as a believer, to be able to be constantly doing your devotion, you have to know who you are. Because the verse says, blessed, are the ma blessed is the man. So you have to know your, who you are in Christ. Like um, it says, um, we are governors or we, are, we represent Christ on earth. So if you know that you are an ambassador or you are a governor, you will know how to behave. Mm -hmm. You will know how to equip yourself as an ambassador and as a, um, a governor. Yeah. And then verse 2 says um, we should Make, delight yes. in the word of God. So to be able to um, Make it brief. delight and then meditate upon the word of God, one thing you should know is um, as Christians, we all know that when we pray or when we ask God for something, he doesn't really come to us and be like, Oh, my child, do this, do that. But he comes to us with the word of God. And to be able to piece or be able to bring the word of God together to know what exactly God is speaking to you about, you have to be a person who is intentional and then meditate, up, um, intentional in meditating upon the word of God. And then... Amen. Um, I, I think it's okay. Yeah. Let others also say something. Group... Uh, group three, yes, Brother Collins. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, so um, the little piece that I had is that as we Christians, there are some challenges and difficult times that we face. Uh, that's temptations, trials, and um, difficulties in life. But as we meditate upon the Word of God day and night, and as we read it, we are going to thrive no matter what. And we shall be like a tree that is planted by the riverside, and just like a tree that is planted by the riverside, our leaves are not going to wither, but we are going to be green forever. It's just like, let's say in winter, uh, when we are even down, but as we read the word of God and we are depressed, we are going to feel joy in us as we delight also in the word of God. And we shall um, affect and impact the lives of people just as Christians. Um, amen. <laughs> amen. So the first group that spoke talking about uh, an ambassador, so you depend on the constitution. God's constitution is the word of God. You speak it and pray over it, right? And then also your group is, uh, when you depend on God's word and prayer, you will, you know, you hardly suffer spiritual dryness. Spiritually, you'll be buoyant. Amen. Okay, so the other group. Group four. 
uh, so, group four. Yeah, so we learned that basically although there's trials and tribulations and busyness in our schedules, it's very important to be intentional in our walks with God and mm. to prioritize him by having that daily devotion because it impacts you know, how our week goes and how we see things and it also impacts our ability to reach our full potential through the week and to be prosperous. God bless you. Inten intentionality and consistency is the key here. Amen. And then, which group is that? Uh, I was a part of group one. We talked about like, personal devotions and stuff and like the importance of it and how like when you seek the face of God, that's when like most of your prayers are answered, but not only that, you like become a better person, like just in general. And we talked about not only that, how to do it properly and how to be intentional with your devotions. Because if you're just doing it for the sake of doing it, like there's no real benefit of it. So you have to be intentional with your stuff and how to guard the word in your heart and stuff. So Amen. nothing can really like mess with like mess with you spiritually, you know what I mean? God bless you. So are we done with all the groups? So it is not only in the, in the church, but when we go out there, we must practicalize that. We must continue doing this, and it will build us up. Amen? I said that in our group that if you want to manifest physically, you should be able to what, spend time alone with God. Hallelujah. To manifest physically, you should be able to spend time alone with what? God. Please, let's do it. Let us maintain a strong, personal, devotional life, and you, we shall flourish. Amen. At this time, we're going to ask uh, Brother Collins to lead us in a time of praise. Oh, you have all done well. Please clap for yourself. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Um, so before we start the praises, normally when uh, someone does something for you or you appreciate something from someone, you tell the person, God bless you, right? Okay, so we want to bless God. Should we say God bless God? <laughs> okay, let's say God bless God. Hallelujah. <laughs> All right, shall we humbly rise on our feet and bless God? Hallelujah. Amen. God cannot bless himself. So as we humans, we are the ones that have to bless and praise God. For he says that if we don't bless him, he's going to raise up gravels to praise his name. Are you going to watch God to raise gravels to play, praise his name? You wouldn't want to do that. So you want to join in hands with me as we praise the name of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Okay, so there are some songs that we're going to sing that you know these songs. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise Praise the Lord, 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 because it is good, and his mercy. 
from your heart you want to sing praise the lord praise the lord praise praise the lord say
for us in him. I know that Jesus is my Savior. Give him the praise that he deserves this morning. Give him the praise that he deserves this morning. Don't wait for a song to worship him. Don't wait for a song to tell him how much you love him, how grateful you you are for him. This is the time to lift up your voice and just sing a new song unto him. Before we continue in worship, I just want us to read a verse that we will stand on as we worship today. I'm reading from Romans 8, verse 34, and it says, Who then will condemn us? No one. 
for Christ Jesus died for us and was raised to life for us. And he is sitting in the place of honor at God's right hand, pleading for us. Some versions say interceding on our behalf. We serve a God that is not dead but is very much alive, who is seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding on your behalf. Whatever it is you may be going through, whatever it is you come in here burdened with, you have a Savior that is pleading on your behalf that your situation must change. But it's only when you give that room of worship, that atmosphere of worship, that he begins to move. So as we worship this morning, I want us to worship knowing that you serve a God who is fighting your battles for you. A God who is holy and majestic and perfect in all of his ways. Begin to just lift up the name of God this morning. And just give all your worship to him. Give all of your worship to him. For he is pleading on your behalf. He is interceding on your behalf. He is with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Give worship unto him for who he is. Give worship unto him for he is a good and great God. He is the master. He is the alpha and the omega. Lamb of God, you're seated at the right hand of the Father, you are holy, oh holy. the Lamb of God, and you're seated at the right hand of 
majestic, for he is perfect in all of his ways. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He is the mighty one. He is the one that we call Yahweh, the one that we call Yeshua, our Savior, our Deliverer. He is holy in every single way possible. Worship him this morning and give him the praise that he deserves. Rabbani Adalabashi Adalabai.
Shepherd for leading us powerfully to worship our Most High God. Amen. God bless uh, Brother Collins for the praises, and God bless our brother Thomas Ousu for the time of opening prayer. People of God, once again, we want to welcome you into the presence of the Most High God in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. If you are worshiping with us online, please, you are most welcome. This is BRWC Pill, where God lives and reigns. He lives here and occasionally he visits other places. Amen. So you are in the right place. So stay tuned and we have a lot for you today. Uh, this time we are going to listen to the word of God. And it will be read by our own dear sister Janelle uh, Dansubwedi, after which presiding elder will pray for the Sunday school kids. And then the word of God will proceed thereafter. Amen. So let us welcome our sister Janelle Dansubwedi. She's going to be reading Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 to 12. Praise the Lord. Today's Bible readings will be taken from Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 to 12, and I read, And now, just as you accept Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. Let your roots grow down into him, and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught, and you will overflow with thankfulness. Don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high-sounding nonsense that come from human thinking and from the scriptures, spiritual powers of this world, rather than from Christ. For in Christ lives all the ful ful fullness of God in a human body. So you also are complete through your union with Christ, who is in the head through the, through the who is in the head over every ruler and authority. When you come to Christ, you were circumcised, but not by physical procedure. Christ performed the spiritual circumcision, the cutting away of your sinful nature. For you were buried with Christ when you were baptized, and with him you were raised to a new life because you trusted the mighty power of God, who raised Christ from the dead. Amen. Praise the Lord. Shall we have our Sunday school children here for a quick prayer? Sunday school. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. Shall we be upstanding as we pray for our young ones? Stretch for your hand and prophesy unto these young ones as they go to Sunday school and in their lives. Father, Lord, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we pray committing these young ones to you. Oh, Lord, we pray that your spirit will fill their heart. Father, Lord, we commit every area of their past to you. Oh, Lord Jesus, we know that you, God, you gave this case to us as custodians. We are praying, oh, God, that we will render greater accounts to you when the time comes. Oh, may you guide our steps, my God, to guide these young ones as they go through Sunday school. Oh, Lord, we pray for retentive memory. We pray for understanding of the word. We pray that your spirit will brood over their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. We come against any principalities, powers of darkness uh, that will raise their ugly hands and head against this young ones in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray that your glory will be upon this ones in Jesus name. Our Lord and Master, we pray this morning committing these young ones to you. Father, as they go to their Sunday school, we pray that your protection will go before them. We pray that your spirit will brood up their heart and for them to know you and know you well. Father, we call for retentive memory for these young ones. May you grant them the grace and the fire, oh Lord, that supersede all fires on this earth. We pray committing their lives to you, oh Lord. Any destiny changing spirit, we pray and we come against it in the name of Jesus. 
Father, we pray that they will grow in you and know you well, my God. We pray committing their Sunday school teachers to you. My God, we pray for protection. We pray for strength. We pray for wisdom over their lives. We pray committing their parents to you, oh God. Indeed, we are custodians of these ones. We pray that you will give us wisdom and the knowledge to nurture these ones. So that when the time comes, we will give real accounts to you, God. That indeed, we will be called faithful servant. The little ones you, God, you entrusted us with, we've taken care of it. May you bless these ones for your glory. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. People of God, it is now time to, to listen to the word of God and prayer. So let us do well to limit any kind of movement in the sanctuary. Prepare your hearts. Take your notebooks and your pens and tablets and all your fancy gadgets just solely for God's word. Amen. God has prepared his vessel today to bless us with his word and it's no other person than our own dear elder Ralph. Let us welcome him to the podium. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 May the grace and peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ continue to be with every one of us. Amen. How are we doing? Um, that in sound confidence. How are we doing? Amen. Amen. Within the time that I have, we're going to do a couple things. And um, we are trusting the Lord that the Lord himself will bless us. Amen. But before we go into it, we recognize um, our pastor, all our fathers, all our mothers, our papa, Papa Lawrence Menu. Thank you for always being around us. And for you coming into the house of God today, it is the grace of God. Hallelujah. Um, you may be wondering where our pastor is today. And, and as many of us would know, today is the official inauguration of the church in Berry. Hallelujah. So some of our members, including our pastor, our district secretary, are uh, there in Berry, making sure that the word of God is planted in the city of Berry. Hallelujah. Amen. So if you know anyone who lives around Berry, um, tell them that there is a church of Pentecost that's been established in the city of Berry. Hallelujah. Like I said, we're going to do a couple things today. Today is going to be a brief one, and we trust that God himself will bless us. Can I ask us to kindly stand up just to do this before we go into the word of God? Hallelujah. <clears throat> Amen. 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 The book of Isaiah 61 says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind the broken hearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them they are them that mourn in Zion to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. There is a spirit called the spirit of heaviness, heaviness, despair, hopelessness, tiredness. It takes over a person and the person can begin to function below their God-given capacity. Sometimes you wake in the morning and you don't, you don't find hope for the day. Sometimes you're on a project and, and you don't feel like continuing that thing. The Bible calls it the spirit of heaviness. heaviness. It, it takes over a person and, and life may not be all that God intends it to be. We're going to pray before we go into the word of God, crying to God. If there's anything called the spirit of heaviness in my life, sometimes some people are gripped by this spirit and they begin to project onto others their anger, their frustration, their bitterness. They go to work, they are not happy. They go to work, they are not giving their best. They come to church, they are creating issues because there is a spirit holding them down. It's called the spirit of heaviness. They want to do more, but they can't do it because something is holding them down. 
the spirit of the Lord God is upon you now to cast that contrary spirit away. Sometimes you hear something. The Bible says Job heard something and, and all his energy left him. Sometimes the will to even do anything is gone because of a news you heard. Somebody said something to you, called you a name, and then you are so down, you can't even move up again. A challenge has risen in your family and is taking hold of that family that nothing is moving forward. It's called the spirit of heaviness. We're coming against that spirit now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now listen, you are praying for yourself. I'm praying for myself. We are saying in the name of Jesus, I recover my energy back. I recover my vigor back. I recover my joy back. I recover my hope back. Let somebody pray in this house in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we pray. Every spirit, somebody's praying. Somebody's praying. Pray, 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 pray. There is the spirit of God. There is the spirit of heaviness. Every spirit of heaviness in the name of Jesus Christ, we come against them. Every spirit of despair, every spirit of hopelessness, every spirit of tiredness, every spirit that's causing us not to maximize our potential in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody is praying. Pray, 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 pray. You can do more. You can be more. You can achieve more through the power of God. Your life can move forward. Your family can move forward. Your business can move forward. Your career can move forward. Your study can move forward. You can get better grades if this spirit will live your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We come against every spirit of heaviness. We come against every spirit of heaviness. We come against every spirit of hopelessness. We come against every spirit of despair. In the name of Jesus Christ, we receive the spirit of joy. We receive the spirit of hope. We receive the spirit of faith. We recover all that the enemy has taken from us. We recover it back. Hallelujah. Amen. May we kindly take our seat. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank the Almighty God for a blessed time in His presence. And we thank God for the wisdom He's given to our fathers and our leaders to start the Bible story. The Bible story today, at least for me in the group that I was, was a very good one. Hallelujah. We began to see all that God wants for us in terms of connecting back to Him. Which is why the title of this brief um, preaching, if you like, is, is, is reconnect, Reconnecting Back to God through personal devotion. Reconnection back to God through personal devotion. If you can help with the light, I think that will be helpful for the projection here. Hallelujah. Amen. So it's going to be a brief one and we'll pray afterwards because we've already, through the power of God, been listening to the value of personal devotion. The need for us to commit to God in the morning, seeking his face through the word of God, seeking his face through prayers, Seeking his face through songs of worship, hallelujah. Making our life a life that Christ can come into and can relate with us. Now, we're not going to go into the definitions of devotion. We already know it's a time to seek the face of God, uh, to commit to something, to devote to it, to ensure that through our interaction with God, we can understand him better. Now, we need to understand the essence of devotion before we can stay committed to it. The question is, why devotion? What did we lose? Why do we need to connect to God? It takes us back to Genesis. If you remember the story of Genesis, we lost something. Hallelujah. In Adam, we lost so much. Next slide, please. We lost so much in Adam. Hallelujah. We lost relationship with God. Hallelujah. We lost access to God. And we lost the glory of God. We lost relationship with God. We lost access to God. We lost the glory of God. Somebody could argue, but my name is not Adam. <laughs> Why should I be paying for what I did not do? The Bible makes it very clear that in Adam, we all sinned. Adam was the first representation of God on planet Earth. Hallelujah. God, the Bible says, said, let us create man in our own image. So the existence of humanity started in Adam, and the continuity of humanity can still be traced back to Adam. But thanks be to Jesus, when Jesus came, he started a new 
journeying for you and I. In Jesus, we now have a new name. In Jesus, we now have a new identity. So when we go back to Genesis, we lost so much. We lost relationship with God. The Bible says in the book of Genesis 3, verse 23, I read from the NIV, Genesis 3, verse 23 says, So the Lord banished him, talking about Adam, from the garden of Eden to work the ground from which he had been taken. Adam was put in a beautiful place. Together with Eve, they were meant to have a flourishing life, a blessed life, a great life. But of course, we know the story. The serpent came into the picture and they sinned. They went against the instruction of God and God, the holy God, could not condole sin. He has to punish sin. I say to somebody listening now, in the church and online, please don't fiddle with sin. God will punish sin. Hallelujah. God will punish sin. If there's somebody in the house, you've been told, stop it. Don't do it anymore. Don't continue. It's a good advice. Because when God comes, he will punish sin. He will punish sin. And that's what we see from Genesis 3 verse 23. That beautiful place, that beautiful home, that beautiful opportunity that God gave to Adam. The Bible says because of sin, God himself banished banished every word sent them away you will no longer be here you will no longer be able to relate with me as you've always done because of sin so we lost relationship through adam we also lost access now in the way god intended it Going back to that comment, let us create man in our own image. God was not going to limit access to man. God wanted man to always feel free. The Bible says God will come in the cool of the evening. Adam, what's up? <laughs> you know, it, it, there was no restriction. But when we sinned, we lost access. We could no longer go to God freely. And when you read the Old Testament, it became an issue of creating three sections in the temple the courtyard, the holy place, the holy of holies. Hallelujah. The courtyard is where everybody can be. The holy place is where the priest would be. And the holies of holies, only one priest can go once a year. And if you are not a priest of the lineage of, who can help me? Levi. You have to be of that lineage. And you have to be selected from that lineage. There has to be a lot casted. And whoever that lot falls on is the one who is the unfortunate one in court. Because when he goes in, and if something is wrong, he dies there. Hallelujah. Because of our sin, we could no longer go to God freely. We had to then go through prophets, priests, and even some people are still going to God today through prophets. As a prophet somewhere in the middle of nowhere, you're sending money to, he's saying some things, you can go to God yourself now. Hallelujah. Amen. So we lost access. We could no longer reach God. The Bible says in Isaiah 59 verse 2, but your iniquity have separated you from God. Your sins have eaten his face from you. God was always looking at man. But now because of our sins, he could no longer look at us. We are now strange to God because of sin. We also lost glory. Hallelujah. Having been created in the image of God, there, there, we were given the nature of God, the glory of God. We were able to reflect God on earth. Remember, the Bible says to Ross in the book of Genesis again, that when God told Adam to name the animal, Adam could plunge or could pick the mind of God in the sense that whatever name he gave to the animal, that was the name. Man had glory. Man had glory. But when we sinned, we lost that glory. The popular Romans 3.23 says, For all of us, all of us have sinned, and we have fallen short of the glory of God. There's something called the glory of God. When it comes upon a man, you reflect Christ. Hallelujah. In the Old Testament, when the glory of God comes, it's visible. In fact, people have to bow their heads because they can't behold that glory. So we lost that glory, and through personal devotion, 
is where we can reconnect back to God. Hallelujah. The relationship we lost, the access we lost, the glory we lost, we can regain all of that back as we connect to God. Listen, life without glory, some people say it ends in story. You find people telling story, listen, just connect to God and let God drop an inch of his glory on your life and you stop all this story. You have to pay your bills, you are telling story, you have to, story, story, story. People are tired of story. They need the glory of God. Through personal devotion, through our reconnection back to God, God can give us something back. He can give us his glory back. Hallelujah. Now, the journey to God starts as salvation. This journey to recovering what we lost starts as salvation. Without being saved, you cannot recover your relationship. You can't recover access. You can't recover glory. So what Jesus did for us was to start that relationship of we being able to connect back to God through salvation. And I say it again, if there is somebody in the house here or online who is not saved, we're not talking about coming to church. We're not talking about religion here. We are saying, be genuinely saved. Give your life to Christ and forsake sin. If you have not done that, the journey has not started. Hallelujah. But if you have done that, Welcome to the beginning of that journey. That journey is now a journey where the Holy Spirit, the Bible calls him, I, I like that name. I always use that word. It's an Hebrew name for the comforter, Alos Paracletos. The one that comforts us, the one that helps us, the one that supports us can now hold your hand. It begins to help you to understand the scripture. It begins to reveal Christ to you. Hallelujah. He also helps to transform you and he restores the glory that was lost. Now, what by devoting to God, by, by our devotion, next slide please, what do we stand to gain? As you wake up early in the morning on those tiring days and the bed is calling you and you want to sleep in, what do you stand to gain? Hallelujah. As you are driving to work and you are listening to the scripture rather than the news sometimes, what do you stand to gain? As we come to church, as we pray, as we do all of what we are doing to learn more about God, what do we stand to gain? There are three things at least that we stand to gain. There is a fourth one which I will touch on, but I want to hone in on these three important elements. Again, it's a preaching. It's not so much of digging into things. It's just to layer on what we have learned from the study this morning. The first thing we stand to gain is information. Hallelujah. When you read your Bible, you can be informed. Hallelujah. You can be informed about God. The Bible says what? The Bible says that you can get information. Information, you can, you know, you can be educated. Next slide, please. Sorry, information. Okay, sorry. I think I'm sorry. Um, the previous slide just to share some of the scriptures on that, um, on that slide. Now, information. Uh, there's a story in the book of Acts, interesting story. A certain man is called Ethiopian Enoch. He was going somewhere, uh, and um, the angel of the Lord spoke to Peter to go meet him. This guy is a committed guy, this Ethiopian Enoch. Uh, and he was reading the Bible, and he could not understand what he was reading. So the angel of the Lord directed Peter to him. And Peter went to this guy, uh, Mr. Ethiopian Enoch, do you understand what you are reading? The guy said, I, I, I don't understand. I'm only reading. And how can I understand? So that interaction with Peter resulted in the Ethiopian Enoch being able to understand the scripture. So we can read the scripture for information's sake as established by the Bible. When we read the scripture, there could also be revelation. Um, we, God can reveal things to us. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah 6, the 50B, um, you know, Isaiah was taken into a place where he saw the presence of God, but even though he was a man of God, even though God revealed certain things to him, um, he, he still saw himself in an unclean state. The last thing that can happen to us when we study the Word of God, which we're going to you know, delve into a bit more is transformation. And that's the goal for every one of us. The word of God must be able to transform us, must be able to change us from the inside out. Second Corinthians 3.18, the NIV says, we all with unveiled faces 
as we behold his face as in a mirror, as we come to God as we are now, as we read the Bible, as we study the scripture, something is going on. Something is going on. It's called transformation. God is changing us. God is transforming us. We will spend a bit more time to talk about these three points. So in, in our, you know, for discussion's sake, just think of information, revelation, and transformation. Information is at a very basic level. Revelation is at the middle. Transformation is at a third level. Next slide, please. Now, if we dig into information a bit more, when we study the Word of God, sometimes all we are doing is just to satisfy all righteousness. I have done it. Uh, I'm just rushing out. That can be the objective. Now, Stephen Covey, in one of his um, books, the popular book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, I think the second habit says, you must... Think of the end from the beginning. In other words, when you're starting anything, you must try to project what the goal, what I hope to achieve from this exercise is. That way you gain a bit of energy to keep moving you towards that goal. So part of the aim of this discussion here is to help you understand that there is a lot more to reading the Bible than just getting information. Information is just, you know, sometimes all we are getting is mere story. And Jacob traveled from wherever to wherever. It's good, but that's story. Story, when life eats, when the devil shows up, when life challenges shows up, the stories of the Bible will not be sufficient. Hallelujah. When you need to deal with a demon in the middle of the night, the story of the Bible will not be sufficient. Stories are good. The devil is also well informed. Hallelujah. The Bible says even the demons believe and they tremble the demons believe and they tremble i think we should we should read that james 2:19 let's project james 2:19 for the purposes of those who may think i'm just you know cooking this up james 2:19 are we able to switch hallelujah james 2:19 i think this is a kjv version says yes thou believers that there is one God, thou do it well. The devils also believe and tremble. Hallelujah. The devil is also well informed. So if all we are doing is being informed about God, I'm sorry to say we are at the level of the, of the, help me here. We are at the level of the devil. Unfortunately, because we are informed, and the devil is also informed. Amen. Which is why some of us are not being victorious in our Christian work, because we know as much as the devil knows. And the devil, of course, sometimes can be very aggressive. Amen. So the devil also knows that there is God. So if all you are doing with your devotion is just to be informed, to just read the story and run out of the house, or to come to church and listen to story, stories will not cut it. Hallelujah. The stories of the Bible are great. They form the foundation of our relationship with Christ, but we need to move past the story level. As we commit to devotion, we can't pick just the story. We can't just be informed. We have to move further. We move to Revelation. Hallelujah. Revelation is also the second level. Now, as we get familiarized with the story, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, can begin to reveal things to us. The Spirit of the Lord can begin to share things with us. The Bible says, call upon me, Jeremiah 33, verse 3. Call upon me and I will answer. And I will show you great and mighty things which you do not know before. So there is a level of revelation where we begin to see things. Some people call it Rema. Some people, whatever name it is. And Apostle Paul also prayed that our eyes of understanding will be opened. So as we go deeper... In our personal devotion, studying about God, God can begin to reveal things to us. Hallelujah. I love those who love me. Those who seek me diligently will find me. God begins to show a piece of himself. And this is usually through meditation. As you go out and you meditate on that word, 
love the Lord your God with all your heart. Love the Lord your God. And you are, you are finding ways to love the Lord your God through your day. God can begin to reveal practical ways to you on how to get that done. Hallelujah. At the level of revelation is where some of us di- display certain spiritual gifts. Oh, we can speak in tongue. Mako, 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 mako. Perfect. We have moved past the information stage and there is a deposit of God which is now finding expression. Some of us are now charismatic. We can do so much. We are showing it. We are revealing it. That's all good. Faith also can be built at a level of revelation. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So at the level of revelation, a number of things can begin to happen. We are seeing God. We are hearing him. He's displaying himself through us. We are manifesting certain gifts both in church and outside of church. That's wonderful. We are no longer informed. God is now revealing himself to us in a way. The next level, which is the level that we must cry to God, to get to is the level of transformation. There are many people who hear God, who sees God, who display a measure of God, but whose life you look at and you don't want to be a Christian. Hallelujah. You look at the way they get angry and you really fear that (laughs) I don't want to have anything to do with this guy that speaks in tongues. This anger, this bitterness, this infighting, this lack of forgiveness... I don't want to have anything to do with this person. The level of transformation is where God is saying we come into maturity. We become like Christ. We allow the word of God that we have read that has been shown to us to now have power to change our life. Hallelujah. The level of transformation is where you find renewal of the mind. Don't forget we are body, mind, soul, and spirit. When we start to come into God and his word, the word of God begins to wash us, wash our minds, wash some of our tendencies, wash some of our proclivities, our fears, our worries, and we begin to manifest Christ. We begin to have what is called character change. Hallelujah. And God begins to reveal himself through us And the Holy Spirit is allowed to prune us, pruning. Some things are taken from us. Sometimes those processes are very tough. Um, That's the transformation stage. And like I said, we begin to grow into the image of God. The the popular Romans 12, 2 says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. When our mind, when my mind begins that process of transformation, what is happening is that I'm allowing more of the Spirit of God to impact my mind. The mind is the place of will. The mind is the place of decision. The mind is where you say, I will not do that thing, and nobody will force you to do it. But when you allow the Spirit of God through personal devotion to start working on you, you start seeing a softening of your mind. Hallelujah. A sister on uh, Friday, um, God bless Sister Grace Akabedu, powerful ministration on Friday here. She helped us to understand uh, some of the challenges that uh, David and, and um, Samson went through. Samson in a way, you can argue that he, he neglected God. He, he, was, he was full of charisma. He was displaying all these things, and, and he left God behind. And not long after, his life became almost like a game. You know, somebody wants to capture you, and you're telling them, if you capture me, until they eventually captured him. Hallelujah. So God is calling us to a place of transformation as we devote to God, as we study the word of God, as we meditate on it, something is happening. But we all, with unveiled faces, beholding him as in a glass, we are being changed into his image. That fear goes. Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. You come to church and somebody preaches and tells you, you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. That comes into you. It transforms you. It sends out fear. You can now 
Hold yourself high, chest out, shoulders high, and go do what God has called you to do. Hallelujah. Maybe you had thought of fighting when you get home. This guy will hear from me. I will give him a piece of my mind. And you are ready to go on. And somebody comes and, and, and the word of God comes and says to you, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the word of God. Oh. No, that is home. And you're like, this meek thing, I don't, but you know this is God speaking to you. And you allow that word to come in and you let go. Hallelujah. Who knows if you got home, you slap that guy and the guy also slapped you twice. And before you know it, the next thing you can grab is a stick and he decides to grab a stone. And the next thing you hear is 911. And it all feels like a dream. And then they ask you to put your hands behind your back. And you are, the next name that comes to mind is Pastor. Pastor, Pastor. Pastor was not there when that thought was coming to your mind that you should hit that person. It all starts as a process. So when we allow the word of God to work on us, there are things God is preventing us from our lives. There are some dangers that we can easily run into that God is working on us. So the level of transformation is the level that God wants us to get to. And to flourish, you have to be at that level of transformation. Hallelujah. To go out and get unleashed. (laughs) Think of God. Would God want to unleash a wicked guy? (laughs) Think of God. Would God want to unleash somebody who is very angry? And they go out and they preach and you don't listen to the word of God and they they give you one. Those are not the people God wants to unleash. He wants to unleash those who go out and reflect his image. So the level of transformation is the level of being unleashed. The level of transformation is the level of reflecting God. That's where we are blessed. That's the level where we flourish. One more point which I just want to mention is the next slide is the level of glorification. This is not here. This is when we go to him eventually. Hallelujah. So all of what we are doing now, those days of devoting to God, those days of coming to church, the reading of the word of God is all preparing us to reunite with God at the end of the day. We are not doing this in vain, people of God. The Bible says if all we are doing, all our hope is here. We are of all men most miserable. So this, is, this devotion thing that we're talking about is not in vain. Hallelujah. God is transforming us into his image so that at the end of day, whether rapture happens or whether we die or whatever happens and we show up in his presence, we are guaranteed of eternity with him. That way, this God that you are going to be reuniting with at the end of the day, you have spent your time learning about him. He's no longer strange to you. You've learned some things about him, and he's calling you, he's welcoming you. Thank you for all you've done while you are on here. Thank you for representing me in that mall. Thank you for representing me in that school. Thank you for not disrupting my plan in the church. Thank you for, thank you, and he welcomes us home. There is a level called glorification, where eternity forever is with God. So we must have a purpose in mind that all of what we are doing is not in vain. That, that, that push, that read it now, read the book of Psalm, is not in vain. It is helping us to move past being informed, to hearing from God, to being transformed into his nature. And when it comes, because we are now a part of him, it takes us home with him. May the Lord help us. May his grace continue to be upon us as we continue this journey. Don't trivialize this journey. Some days it can be very tough. And I speak for myself. Some days having a devotion in the morning is like asking me to (laughs) to do more than I could. But if I miss it in the morning, I try to catch up at some point during the day. Hallelujah. I'd like to, on a lighter note, use um, uh, uh, a language that our elder and Papa Aqua, um, having been one of the fans of um, uh, is it Ashanti Kotoko, uh, Ashanti Kotoko. There is a saying there in soccer back in the days, if you miss the leg, don't miss the 
don't miss the ball. In other words, if you miss it in the morning, don't miss it in the afternoon. Make sure your day, make sure your day has a feel of God. Don't let it keep going without God. We don't want to repeat the story of Samson. He left God, he was displaying power until the devil hit him badly. Can we rise to our feet at this point? Can we rise to our feet? And I, I mentioned it earlier on, if, if you're in the house here and you've not given your life to Christ, you have not started that journey. The Bible would almost be like a storybook. It would be like a storybook. And there is no victory in story. We need transformation to get to the point where God wants us to get to. And we're asking ourselves today as we pray and we round up that, you know, personal devotion is a way to reconnect back to God. You connect to God through personal devotion. And we all should continue to seek that transformation that comes through devotion. Hallelujah. Again, if you're in the house, you've not given your life to Christ, this is your opportunity. If you're online, this is your time to ask your creator, the one that you used to connect to, ask him, I want to connect back to you. As we bow our heads, let's give this sacred moment to those who have not come to Christ, to come to Christ. Father, we pray this moment. If you're in the house, you can repeat this prayer with me. If you're online, there's a connect card that you can connect to. Uh, let us know so that we can also help you as you continue this journey of salvation. So if you're in the house or online, pray with me at this moment. Begin to open your mouth to talk to God. God, I'm sorry for all my sins. I'm sorry for having disappointed you in many ways and if you're also a backslider you used to be in christ but you've walked away this is your moment talk to god god i'm coming back home i'm coming back to the place of righteousness i'm coming back to the place of worship please receive me jesus i'm sorry for my sins i'm sorry for all the things i've done to to, to disappoint you i'm sorry for all the things i've said to go against your will i'm sorry i'm sorry jesus the relationship we used to have the access i used to have to you I'm sorry for having lost that, the glory that you have given to me. I'm sorry for having lost it. Pray at this moment and confess your sins to him. And the Bible says if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us all our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Father, we pray for those who are rededicating their lives to you now or who are coming to you newly. Please accept them, Jesus. Please accept them as the word of God has said. Write their name in the book of life. Give them the grace to continue this journey of righteousness with you. We thank you because you will do it in Jesus' mighty name. We have prayed. Amen. We're going to say two or three prayers in the time that I have. And I really want you to pray. You know, we used to have it. We lost it. And Jesus restored it. This prayer is a prayer of recovery. If there's anything you have lost... If there's any good thing that has left your life, now is the time for restoration. If there's a good relationship that you, you lost by whatever means, now is the time for God to restore it. Let's begin to open our mouth. God, restore me. Restore me. Restore me. Restore me. Restore me. The Bible says, I will restore the years that the locust worm, the canker worm, has eaten. God is a restorer. Pray. Pray for your family. Pray for your finances. Pray for your life. Pray that God will restore you. God will restore you. Oh, I, I need people who are praying. I need people who are praying in this house. I need people who are praying in this house. I need people to pray. Restore me, O oh Lord. Restore me, O oh Lord. Restore my health. Restore my finances. Restore my relationship. Restore my family. Restore my career. Restore the opportunities you have given me. Restore my vision. Restore my insights. Restore the opportunities you have given to my family. Every lost business. Restore it, Jesus. Somebody is praying for restoration. Somebody is praying for restoration now. Somebody is praying for restoration. Oh God of all restoration, as we reconnect to you through devotion, you will restore us in the name of Jesus Christ. You will restore us. You will restore us. You will restore us. Neka bazuda vina makataya and Moses breske leka restore, restore, oh Lord. Mayena paroske vezine katayaka. Mazava luna paravos kiska fali makazo enaya. Oh God of restoration, restore us. Hallelujah. We are also praying. The Bible says there is the glory of the terrestrial and there is the glory of the celestial. God, any glory that has left my life, that has left my family, 
God, restore, restore, restore glory now. Everything that needs to come back into my life for your name to be glorified, restore them now. Somebody is praying in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh God, restore, restore our glory, restore our glory. In the Mozabalina Katoske Bereskili Bazali Matarwaba, Eremonushke Velosta Bazula, restore, 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 restore. In the name of Jesus Christ, 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 restore our glory, restore our glory, restore our glory. Hema Suta Falabarushke Vezelima, pray, 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 pray. Savadavola, Mr. Taliaba. Hallelujah. As a church, we're going to pray. There are some of us who are struggling with one thing or the other. There are some who are looking for jobs, some who are new in the country. There are some who are studying who are just so confused. There are some who just need the hand of God to touch them now. There are people who are sick. There are people who are challenged. Let's raise a voice of prayer that God intervene, intervene, intervene. All manners of challenge intervene. The Bible says he went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. God intervened, intervened. Somebody is praying, intervene, intervene, intervene in all of the challenges we are facing, Jesus, as we reconnect back to you. Intervene in the name of Jesus. Intervene in the name of Jesus. Intervene in the name of Jesus. Show us mercy, Jesus. Show us mercy, Jesus. Show us mercy, Jesus. Those who are new in the country, show them mercy. Those who are sick, heal their body. Those who are looking for job, provide opportunities. Those who need reconciliation, help them, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, our Father, we thank you. We honor you. We return all glory to you. As we reconnect back to you, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you will transform our lives. We pray that you will transform our situations. We pray that you will transform our body, soul, and spirit. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever glory has left our life, you will restore them now in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for your help. We pray for your strength as we connect to you, seeking your face. You will help us. You will bless us. And all glory will be to your name and your name alone. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Personal devotion sustains our connection with God. Personal devotion sustains our connection with God. So let us seek transformation through our personal devotion. Amen. Let us maintain our strong personal devotion with God and God will speak to us and direct us. Amen. So, what shall we say to our elder? And the Rav, God bless you so much for blessing us with the word and prayer. People of God, it is time for offering. Tithe and offering. So, offering time. Yes, offering time. That's good. So, let us give to bless God. You know, we give a tenth of our substances to God. And on top of that, we add offering. Hallelujah. So we have the electronic means, brwcp at gmail.com, those online, even those in person. And then we also have the T-I-T-H-E dot L-Y, tightly up, search for Pentecost Worship International. Pentecost International Worship Center, P-I-W-C-P, give and you'll be blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Shall we humbly rise on our feet? I was, we sing songs to bring our offering. Amen. Amen. We praise your name. We praise your name. To you alone, our God. On our knees, we bow. To you alone, our God. On our
Possessing the nation, possessing the nation, a people of God, transform. May your confessions become your possessions. Amen. Is anybody worshiping with us for the very first time today? Please let us see by the show of your hand so we can acknowledge your presence. 
can stand on your feet if anybody is worshiping with us for the very first time. Uh, shall we give the Lord a clap of rain? Hallelujah. Great. So you're going to please tell us your name and who invited you to church today. And whether you are coming to worship with us or you are just visiting. My name is Eugene. 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 Yeah, and Mr. James invited me here. Who is Mr. James? Oh, God bless you. God bless you, Mr. James. Eugene. Okay, go ahead, brother. My name is Caleb. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah. I came with Mr. and Mrs. Brown. God bless you. Um, I'm Ephraim. Yeah, I came with Mr. and Mrs. Uh, you, I didn't get your name. I'm Ephraim. 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 Yeah, oh, God bless you. Yes. Yeah, I will book watch mine. Mm -hmm. I came with Mr. and Mrs. Brown. Oh, yeah. Shall we give them a clap of I think there's, there's one in the corner there. Seated. My name is Admiral Frank. And Mr. James brought me here. Oh, okay. God bless you so much. God bless you all for coming to visit us today. We hope you would uh, make a decision to fellowship with us on a permanent basis. If you don't have a home church, please, we can we will strongly recommend this church to you. Hallelujah. Yeah, this is Church of Pentecost, PRWC Pill, where God lives and reigns. Hallelujah. We love people so much, so please be part of us if you don't have a home church. Hallelujah. God bless you. So at this time, we're going to ask uh, P. Press to give us the announcement. Where God Lives and Reigns. My name is Roberta Aqua. And I'm Crystal Adichum. And you are now watching PIWC Peel Press Broadcasting Kingdom News. Let's take note of the following announcements. is the book of Psalms under the theme of the month, which is flourishing through personal devotion. Our key scriptures for the month are Psalms chapter 1 verses 1 to 3 and Luke chapter 5 verses 15 to 16. Let's all do well to stay consistent with our readings. Amen. And the books for the month are the books of Psalms for the month of April and May, so please take note. For our midweek services, we have our morning devotion every Monday and Thursday morning at 6 a.m. on Zoom. We have our Wednesday Bible study teaching at 8 p.m. on Zoom, as well as our empowerment service every Friday evening at 8 p.m. in-house in the sanctuary. See you there. There will also be a water baptism happening next week after service at 2 p.m. at 3 Arrow Road. All those who are included are encouraged to see presiding elder for more details. Yes. Don't forget to follow us on all of our social media platforms at PIWC Peel, as well as our youth pages at PIWC Peel Youth. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at PIWC Peel so you never miss any updates. If this is your first time stopping by, you are most definitely welcome. If you're joining us in-house, just give us a wave so we can connect with you. And if you're watching us from online, there will be a connect card dropped in the chat below for you to click on and for us to get to know you better. That is all the announcements we have for you this week. Thank you so much for listening, church, and we can't wait to see you next week. Yes, amen. Um, just a few of the announcements that we would like to you know, share with the church here. Um, this same week, uh, we're also going to have North York Area Retirement Offering in honor of Apostle Daniel uh, Neil Lomote Engman and the wife Deborah Engman. And the theme is God will make a way. So from 17th of April to 19th, 8 p.m., uh, beginning this Wednesday, there will be a virtual joint program for both Scarborough area and um, Alberta 
area. And as well as on, on the Thursday, we will have um, virtual at the area level, and they are all in connection with the retirement of our leaders. So Apostle Engman is retiring next year. God willing, this year we have our Scarborough um, area head, um, Dr. Jamina, and also in Alberta we have you know, Apostle Saki. They are all retiring this year. So there's going to be a national joint program this Wednesday. On Thursday, we will have our area virtual level, that is the North York area. On Friday, in connection with this same retirement program, we will have in-person service at the district level. Then on Saturday, we continue to have the same program virtual. So Saturday will be in the evening. Mostly we don't meet on Saturdays, but because of this retirement program that we do have for our Apostle Engman and their family, we are meeting this Saturday in the evening to also pray with them. Hallelujah. Then on Sunday, we will have special offering for Apostle and Mrs. Engman. That will be Sunday, April 21st in honor of them. They will be retiring next year. But according to the church programs and constitution, if a leader is retiring, we have a year to do um, special offering till their retirement um, period comes. So please, we all know, those of us who don't know, Apostle Engman is the first pastor of Church of Pentecost here in Canada. When he came, and everything became successful, the rest trooped in. Hallelujah. So the first pastor is retiring. He has served this grateful church of ours for more than three decades. And imagine three decades, somebody dedicating his life and the family life to worship, to serve the Lord. We have to give him a befitting retirement. Hallelujah. So please, let's take note of that. Then we also have our baptism service this afternoon, we have our brothers and sisters who are coming through, you know, water baptism. It is happening at North York. So after church, those of us who are going to take part in this all-important service, just wait behind and let's talk. As well as our brothers who join us today, don't be in a hurry to go home. We'd like to know more about you. So brothers, when church is done, please stay back and let's have a very wonderful Pentecostal talks. Amen. Amen. At this point, I'll hand over to Elder Aqua to wrap up. Amen. Ebenezer, that's far the Lord has brought us today. So we're going to invite our sister, Deaconess Matilda, to give us the closing prayer, after which our father, uh, Lawrence Menu, will give us a benediction. <laughs> Please, may we rise up. And let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you and bless you this morning. Father, we have come to praise and worship you. And we thank you for the word that we have received. Father, let this word be a light unto our path. Father, we pray that, Lord, you continue to help us, O oh God, to be able to devote ourselves to seek your face before we head out to God. Father, we come against any heaviness, any darkness around us, O oh God. Let the consume, if I consume it in the name of Jesus, O oh God. Anytime we mention your name, Jesus, signs and wonders follow. Father, we thank you, O oh God, for the manservant you have used this morning, O oh God, to bless your church, O oh God. Continue, my Lord, to bless him, O oh God. Wherever he locates himself, let the word speak through him, O oh God, to bless people. Father, we thank you, O oh God, for connecting us, O oh God, to your word. Father, let our life, O oh God, reflect unto others, O oh God. Let us be able to meditate your word, my Lord. That the word that we meditate, O oh God, will be like a tree planted by the riverside. That will reflect unto other people and change people's life, O oh God. Father, we thank you, O oh God, for our students, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Give them the knowledge and wisdom, O oh God, as they are getting back to school, O oh God. It was my prayer this afternoon, O oh God, Father, enlighten them. Let them excel, O oh God, in their education, my Jesus. I thank you, O oh God, for the newcomers in this country, O oh God. May you help them and pave a way for them in the name of Jesus. 
We thank you, O oh God, as we are about to leave. My Lord, we are not living here the same. We are living here blessed. Continue, O oh God, to reveal yourself unto us, O oh God. Father, we commit the week before you, O oh God. Bless us, O oh God, to bless other people. Let our life change, O oh God. Transform us, O oh God. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. And now may the Spirit of Christ cause you to seek him more, know him more, and be like him more and more. In Jesus' name I bless you. Amen. <laughs>